Right, what's good, YouTube? Welcome back to another reaction. Today, we have Do We Need Nuclear Energy to Stop Climate Change? This is from Kurz. They make amazing videos. So, uh, yeah, ready to start for this one. Let's check it out, man. Do we need nuclear energy to stop climate change? More and more voices from science, environmental activists, and the press have been saying so in recent years. Is it like nuclear energy? It just like has a really bad name for it, and that's why we don't like... You know, we watched a video and it dismantled a lot of nuclear energy sites, whereas, like, we should be making more. But this comes as a shock we'll to those we're gonna who make are more. fighting against nuclear From energy and the problems that come with it. So, who's right? Well, it's complicated. To slow rapid climate change, the world needs to reduce greenhouse gas emissions to net zero. Right. In 2018, three quarters of global emissions were released through energy production, namely by burning fossil fuels. Energy is a broad term that describes all sorts of stuff. The thing is, though, like, to, for this climate change palaver and everything, like, I, know, I know, like, people try to, like, do their parts, but, like, the government just needs to put laws in place and just, like, actually put their foot down and like, change From it, From moving things and people around to putting things big and small together or heating our homes. Currently, 84% of the world's primary energy comes from fossil fuels. Probably a hot hard to put your from oil, down 27% from coal and 24% from gas. Around 10% of the global oil supply is just used to burn in boilers to make our homes cozy and warm. Only about 16% of global energy is from low emission sources. Almost 7% from hydroelectric. 5% from solar, wind, bioenergy, wave, tidal, and geothermal combined, and about 4% from nuclear. So we pretty much rely on coal, oil, and gas to keep our civilization going. Yeah, pretty which means much. It's actually very hard to transition away from them. Fair to have enough. a chance of escaping fossil fuels without throwing humanity back into the Stone Age, one of the most impactful things we can do is to electrify as many sectors as possible. Right, I. Aren't they making like all cars have to be electric by like 2050 or something? Even though that's like 25 Electricity years. Electricity is the stuff going to be changed in 25 magic. years. When you plug something into a socket so you can watch YouTube. Every industry that can switch from burning fossil fuels to electricity needs to do so from electric cars to electric heaters. Why do we need to bet so hard? You know what? To be fair, it has started. Like, to my wall right now, I have an electric heater. You know, it's a new, it's a new build apartment, new build houses, new build apartments. They're all having electric heaters. Uh, there's a lot of electric cars on the road. On so it, it, we are because making the we start to it, which is good. Electricity with low emission technologies like solar, wind, or nuclear. So electricity is a real lever for a radical transition. But there are a few problems making this transition really hard. First of all, in most places in the world, electricity is still generated mostly by burning fossil fuels. And not oh, only that, shit. in the last 20 years, the world's electricity usage increased 73% in absolute terms. Makes sense. While we A lot more gamers are <laughs> in this world we now. We are installing renewables at record speeds. At the same time, Crypto the amount miners of fossil also. fuel we're burning for electricity still keeps rising year by year. Renewables have so far not been able to catch up with the demand for new electricity, and so despite our progress, emissions from electricity are still rising worldwide. The other alternative to fossil fuels is nuclear, and even though it's not renewable, its greenhouse gas emissions are tiny compared to burning stuff. But in the last Why 20 is years, nuclear has basically stagnated. Countries like China, India, and South Korea built new reactors, while Germany and Japan have been actively taking their yeah. nuclear plants offline. Which seems a bit weird if we look at the countries with the most low carbon electricity in the world that get most of their juice mainly from two sources, nuclear or hydropower. Take France and Sweden. In France, only around 10% comes from fossil fuels, Holy while 67% comes from nuclear and 23% from renewables, oh, primarily fuck. hydro. In Sweden, almost 30% comes from nuclear power and about 45% from hydro. So we know that nuclear energy can work at scale. On the technical side, because of the lack of investment and innovation in the last few decades, the majority of the world's nuclear reactors are pretty old technology that's very costly to replace. 
In most Western countries, building nuclear reactors has become very expensive for a variety of reasons like a loss of know-how in constructing them, policy changes and increased regulatory constraints so it can take a decade or longer just to finish a power plant. Wow. In contrast, countries like South Korea, China, India and Russia... That, that honestly seems a bit too long in this day and age to make a nuclear plant. You know what I mean? It should, it should take, you know, it should be quicker than a fucking new decade. nuclear reactors comparatively quickly and at a competitive cost. Still, generally in the West, the current generation of nuclear power plants are more expensive to build and maintain than most fossil fuel alternatives. There are also the concerns about nuclear waste and the fear of accidents, but we cover those in other videos in more detail. Yeah, we actually watched that video and it was, it was a really good video to be fair. for nuclear reactors that solve many of their problems, namely small reactors that take less time and money to get started. There are also next generation technologies that can already turn radioactive waste into new fuel, but so far these have not been deployed at a scale where they can have a significant impact on the nuclear sector. Right. Considering these uncertainties, some argue that nuclear power is a dangerous relic of the past and that we should just let it go and focus on renewables. But while renewables undoubtedly are the future... Yeah, but that's literally because of like all the bad stories to it. And we've already found out that like nuclear to death rate is not even that high compared to these. ...of electricity, they still have their own huge challenges to overcome before they can take over the vast majority of the electricity grid. The main problem is reliability and consistency. It's not always windy and the sun doesn't always shine, especially in the mornings and evenings when humans need the most electricity. Oh my God, get your solar panels out in the fucking UK right now because it is like 30 degrees, bro. It's fucking... The variations between seasons Hot. don't make this issue easier. To make renewables reliable and not risk blackouts... Couldn't you just stick a load of solar panels in a desert? Couldn't you do that? We need massive storage capacities like really where we can save energy. I bet it is the solar panels and does it right. Peak and release it later when we actually need it. Until this is possible, other sources of electricity need to provide a controllable load that creates the reliability of supply that our civilization needs to run properly. Eventually, we will be able to do this with renewables, but we need a lot of batteries or storage power plants. Right now, we simply don't have the tech and the capacities to make this transition fast enough to replace fossil fuels. But even if we could, there's another aspect we have to take into account. We're not just trying to kick fossil fuels out of electricity, we're trying to replace energy with electricity. If we're going to electrify sectors that currently use fossil fuels, like cars or heating, we will need significantly more electricity than we're currently using everywhere around yeah. the world. And if the electricity needs of the world population continue to grow as they have over the last 20 years, we'll need even more. It all comes down... Does it, isn't that, like, low-key worse? Like, isn't there, like, oh, what is it? I watched like a space video and something happens to do with the sun. It releases some sort of wave that can literally wipe out like, you know, Earth's electricity grid. It's like if everything is electricity, the whole thing's gone. The whole thing's gone. Can't drive, no heating, no nothing. Boom, everything's gone. To one thing, no energy source is perfect. All have their own unique problems. Both renewables and nuclear energy require time, investment and technological innovation. On their own, neither is ready to remove fossil fuels from our electricity grid, although activists on both sides claim that they are. In the end, the question is how we want to deal with all these challenges. Should we give up nuclear immediately and at least temporarily accept higher emissions? Will we try to extend the life of current nuclear reactors and shut them down afterwards while solving the shortcomings of renewables? Or will we invest in new nuclear technology to get new nuclear reactor types that are cheaper and safer? Or will we maybe do both? Opinion part starts here. They'll do whatever's best for the money, let's be honest. <laughs> Considering the risks Let's that climate be honest. change poses for the biosphere and humanity, any technology that has a chance of contributing to a solution should be pursued. That's just good risk management and strategy. 
If preventing rapid climate change as quickly as possible is our goal, it might be a good idea to see nuclear and renewables not... I don't think people are actually understanding how bad climate change is. I, I actually don't think people understand. Like, I fully don't understand as well, but I, I, I can't understand, you know, to a certain extent, and I, I know it's bad. And, like, you can even tell right now, like, people in the UK, like, without aircon and, like, you know, fucking the houses are built to keep heating and shit. It's so, like, the, the, um... It's so humid and shit outside. It's really, really, really fucking bad. And if, if this got worse, I, I honestly think I might die. Like, <laughs> if I don't have air con by, you know, in like five years, I think I'm going to pass out faint and probably end up in hospital. I'm not going to lie. As opponents, but as partners. Because I struggle so we much to breathe. No time to waste, so we should keep and this is all because of climate change. Players on the field. As things are, both nuclear and renewables need innovation and investment. But if we don't know yet which technology will be ready how quickly, why not just invest in both and see what happens? And on the topic of current capacities, if we take nuclear energy offline right now, then that missing capacity will be replaced, at least partially, by fossil fuels. Even if new nuclear power plants in the West are expensive, in the long run, it may be cheaper to build them as long as they prevent more fossil fuel capacity being added and paying for the consequences of rapid climate change. So, do we need nuclear energy? Well, it really depends how hard we choose to make things for ourselves. And in a world that's already having a really hard time quitting fossil fuels, why should we make things harder than necessary? Really, really good video. Really interesting. Let me know what you guys think to it in the comment section below. I do enjoy reading the comments. You guys do just fill up the comment section with so much information. That's actually really amazing. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you leave a thumbs up. Make sure you guys subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video.